I know triple six is the number of the devil but I just see really attractive triplets. <laughs> so my brain's a bit strange. <laughs> what a way to intro a video. I have something called synesthesia. In this video I'm going to tell you all about what it is, my experience with it day to day, all the different types you can get and some are mad. Then I'm going to answer some of the questions that you asked me over on Twitter and Instagram. I really want to call it synesthesia but I heard someone talking about it and they said synesthesia and I'm like I want to say synesthesia. Forgive me father for I have synesthesia. Sorry. Synesthesia. The production of a sense impression relating to one sense or part of the body by stimulation of another sense or part of the body. To put it more simply and to get to the point, I see all words, letters and numbers as colours in my head. This is grapheme colour synesthesia which is the most common type. Some people have way cooler types than this which I'll get into in this video but you may also find out that you have synesthesia too. Just bear with me, just wait. I really want to say synesthesia. So this thing that I have, it isn't some form of physical or mental health condition. It's not a negative thing. Synesthesia. Synesthetes. <sighs> Forgive me, father. Synesthetes just perceive things a bit differently in their heads. Most researchers of this describe it as a difference in perceptual experience, which is pretty cool. Before I get into this, don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already subscribed and click the thumbs up button as well if you are into this sort of thing. So I see words, letters and numbers as being coloured in my head, but some people can taste colours or music or words or they can listen to music and see colours. Some people can feel other people's pain which we'll talk about as well. Sometimes when I see pictures of people I get certain smells in my head. This doesn't happen very often but it does sometimes happen. Like for example I'll look at a, I'll scroll through Instagram and I'll see a picture of a guy, I don't know, and I'll get a smell of aftershave in my head. And I'm always like, I wonder if that's what that person smells like. Or sometimes I'll just get really random smells when I see people on TV. And I'm always like, bet that's what they smell like. Can you imagine? This was some sort of superpower. So this is how I see the alphabet in my head, pretty much. Numbers also have colours as well. And they also sometimes kind of have personalities, which I'll go into in further detail later on. Not everyone with grapheme colour synesthesia sees the same colours for the same letters and words etc. Although A being red, B being blue and C being green I think is fairly common but again it's it's different for a lot of people. So I posted this on Twitter. I have synesthesia and all words and letters have colours. Tell me your name and I'll tell you what colour it is in my head. Wee bit of fun. And I get so many replies and I had so much fun telling everyone the colours of their name. And I think this is actually the first time I've used my synesthesia properly like this ever in so much detail. I'd recommend going to that thread and trying to find your name if you can because loads of people replied. A lot of the more common names are in that thread. But if you don't see your name then leave your name in the comments below and I'll tell you what colour it is. I found it so interesting because I've never really properly thought about it because it's so normal in my head and I'm so used to it so I don't really consciously think of it but I found that some names were much more aesthetically pleasing in my head than other names. Like names with similarly coloured letters are much nicer in my head but also names with U's or G's or Y's depending on the placement sometimes just threw things off in my head and they were a wee bit more tricky in my brain and they didn't look as good as more like matchy matchy names but again totally depends on the name totally depends on the placement of the letters in the name also sometimes names in my head they weren't just made up of like block letters like you can see in the alphabet sometimes you know depending on the placement names could become more like sort of like a gradient or more blurred and blended together or some colours just stand out more than other colours so then that overtakes certain letters and the first letter of the name, the colour of that letter, always has more of an impact on the name or the colour of the name than the other letters. It's very hard to explain. I'll show you some examples of lots of Sarah's replied. Initially when I think about it, Sarah's a very green name in my head because S is green but the A's are, are red and R is a slightly darker red. So if I really picture it, I do see those reds quite prominently. And the background is black, like um, in that alphabet picture. My brain really only focuses on the beginning of the name at first, which is green, 
but because the A's are red, they do show up, but I can't quite pinpoint exactly how the name's coloured because it all sort of merges together. And the H should also be black, according to my little colour diagram, but it isn't, which is strange, but that's the gist. An example of nice names in my head, not that Sarah's not nice, it's very Christmassy, <laughs> but examples of names that kind of blend well together in my head would be names like Anna. Anna's just mainly all red because the A's at either end are red. According to my colour palette, N should be orange, but because the A's are at either end in the name, um, that sort of overtakes the N's, so the N's are just red, but the A's are darker red. Names with E's, N's and L's are quite nice because those colours go together in my head. So for example, the name Ellie. This isn't an accurate example of what it looks like in my head because the colours are lighter and softer and kind of more, they blend together more, they're not as blocky as this but it's sort of like the gist of what I would see in my head. Names with O are interesting because O's are always bright white, so that sort of overtakes the rest of the word or rest of the letters. So names beginning with O are more, more white than other names. H can throw off names because H should be black, but in certain names, depending on the placement, it's not black. Same with the letter G, the letter G is quite hard for me to picture in my head. My friend Adrian's name looks really nice because the colours blend together really well and it's a really autumnal coloured name in my head. Again, this isn't accurate, it's not as blocky as this, it's sort of like a gradient in my head and it blends together more. The eye doesn't really stand out because the other colours overtake the eye so that's not really that accurate but just picture it something like this but more blended in my head. <laughs> so here are some other names that I did on Twitter. Heather said, this stuff is always super fascinating to me What's Heather look like? And I said, Heather is a warmish bluey colour, but the H and TH are black. This one's difficult because E and A are normally orange and red, but in Heather they aren't. You've broken the brain algorithm, congrats. And see now when I think of Heather, again it's different, like the H and the TH are dark, but I can't work out if they're, they're black. I don't think they're black, but they're just sort of darker coloured. I want to say more like dark blue, but it's, it's, it's hard to tell in my head because of the E and the A and the other E and R, so I don't know if it's just a warmish bluey colour because the E and the A are making the H and the TH less dark. Oh my god, this is neat, what does Jenny look like? Jenny is greeny orange, the J is light green and the E and Ns are orange, so they're more prominent than other E or N names, but because the J is capitalised, it's very green. So how did this all begin? Let's look into that. Since I was wee, I've always had a really vivid imagination. I was right into reading in words very early on and before I could read I would sit with a book and pretend that I could read anyway and like will myself to be able to read. <laughs> then as soon as I could read and write it's all that I did. I'd write these ridiculous stories which were way better than anything that I could write now um, because everything was so vivid in my head. I feel like it's not quite as vivid as it was when I was a child but I've always loved words and I was obsessed with learning words and learning the alphabet in school when I was wee and I was so into this letterland thing I think it was called that we did in school to learn letters. So each letter was a character and I remember like willing these to be real, like I really wanted these to be real characters. So like this was Annie Apple, this was Dippy Duck. I remember Harry Hatman really well and I think it's because I fancied him. He was the only one I could remember when I was trying to think back to learning letters in school but in my head he was Harry Hatman but definitely Harry Hatman. Impy Ink was one of my favourites and I used to get so annoyed with my classmates because some of them would say Ippy Ink and I'd be like it's Impy Ink, get it right, human. Kicking King was a good one, I like that. So I was looking into whether my synesthesia is a learned one because these letters and characters have colours but they don't match my colours that I have in my head so if the colours matched I'd be more inclined to say well, because I learned with these Letterland things, that's why they're coloured in my head, but they don't match. And then if that was the case, then why aren't more other people synesthetes too, you know? I've read varying things about this, but I don't believe that mine was learned. And I also read it can be genetic. I asked my parents if they had this though, and they, they don't have this, so. Although, I always wondered why the U was turquoise in my colour palette, because it drives me nuts. And then, when I looked up the letter U in this Letterland, look at the colour. Uppy Umbrella is turquoise. So maybe we up you made an impact on me, who knows. So I thought everyone pictured words as colours, like I never thought anything of it until I asked someone in school what colour they saw like the word green or something and they were like what? And I thought it was strange and then when I asked about I realised that I was the strange one because nobody else pictured words as colours and I was like oh. Although fun fact my brain does see words like green, blue etc as the colours they represent 
initially, but then when I properly think about the word, like green's green and orange for some reason, the E's are very orange and the M and blue is blue, yellow, turquoise and orange. I think having this has helped me learn like vocab and remember words and stuff in school like for German or remembering things in geography and stuff like that. I think it's helped me to remember because I could be like, right, blue, red, you know, like for spelling and stuff. But I don't think I realise that I'm using it. I think it all just, it just happens without me realising. It's like a subconscious thing. Although I wonder if this is why I get my words mixed up a lot. Like maybe my brain's seeing different colours and then I'm saying the wrong word. I don't know. So I was reading about why this is a thing and it's something to do with cross wiring in the brain. So like the brain's colour centre and the brain's number area, they're both located in the same region of the brain. And some studies have shown that people with graphene colour, synesthesia, have more grey matter in this area of the brain. Grey matter just makes me think of aliens and I don't know why. Apparently some people with this have more vivid memories. I have a terrible memory for things like dates or like important things. I remember every fall that I've ever witnessed in my life. It's I'm so vivid in my head. Like I can picture like a guy falling off a bar stool like 10 years ago. Hilarious. And I can also remember things people said when I was a child. Like just, just I remember silly stupid things that stuck out and made me laugh when I was young but I don't remember anything important or useful. <laughs> Let's move on to numbers. The so number wise I'm terrible with numbers. I'm terrible with numbers. I've always been bad at maths. I've always been more of an English person or like words like English languages etc. Can't do maths. You'd think and this colour thing would help but it doesn't. However numbers 1 through 11, or all numbers really have colours but mainly like 1 through 11 have like more prominent colours and then the, the higher numbers are just made up of the colours of the other numbers. So this is how I'd see numbers in my head but 11 is yellow which is strange because 11 should really be like black because ones are black so I don't know why that is. Numbers also sometimes have personalities in my head as well. This sounds mad but I'm going to go into more detail about this in a little bit in this video. Stay tuned. Days of the week are different again so I see like instead of them being the colours of the letters of the alphabet, Mondays are red, Tuesdays are blue, Wednesdays are green, Thursdays are purpley kind of coloured, Fridays are white, Saturdays are black and Sundays are brown. I spoke to people on Twitter with um, different types of synesthesia and I found these so fascinating. Get this. So Sally said I have mirror touch synesthesia but the colour word type fascinates me. My name is Sally Aikens. I replied saying, wow, that's amazing. What's that like? I'd love to hear more about your experience. Sally is jolly looking. It's red, yellow and green. Aikens is more red and orange, but the S is green, so it fades into that. She said, I do get other sensations as well, but they're a lot milder. I've heard that it's a very strong form of empathy, that I'm literally feeling the other person's pain. It's only real injuries though. Injuries on TV don't have the same effect. And I think she said this in reply to something else that I said. And I think she'd said something else before this but I can't find it. She gets like pain in her legs when she sees a physical injury in real life. What? Someone said, I have synesthesia too but I have strong colour associations with numbers especially. But I also taste and experience the texture of colours. It's pretty neat. Imagine being able to taste colours like what? Someone else said, I have auditory tactile synesthesia, so I feel sounds in my body. What? This person told me that they paint, just right, they paint using their synesthesia, so I asked them, how do you work it into your paintings, tell all, and they said, a friend of mine is a perfume maker, I smell his fragrances and paint the colours that I see. He has one of my paintings hanging in his shop in Philly, and I'm like, that is... Imagine being able to incorporate it into your art or some, I was speaking to someone else who hears music and then paints the colours of the music. What? This was interesting as well so I was talking to this person about theirs and they said a specific pain I experience is black and since suffering flu last December I can't eat fresh fruit because it tastes brown. If I see or imagine an open wound an electrical energy type wind takes out my legs for a second Seems we're neurologically connected. And then someone else said, okay, I thought I was the only one who tasted things as colours. Not everything, but a recent one was a frozen Mountain Dew flavour. It was teal and it tasted teal. My daughter thought I was crazy. Right now, spring water tastes like muddy yellow brown and it's nasty and troubling. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, Ian said, I have aphantasia, hope I'm pronouncing that right, which means I have basically no visual memory. Show me a photo of yourself and I'll forget what you look like a few minutes later. Maybe slightly less fun than her one. And then this person said, I'm curious what colours your name appears as. Bright orange by the way, not relatable. I'm envious as I have aphantasia and can't visualise anything at all. This is one of the tests. 
use to try visualise things. I see one always when asked to picture a red star or anything in my mind so she sees nothing like she just doesn't she can't picture anything in her head whereas I'm more of a five most of the time or like or maybe probably a six actually because when I visualise these letters I actually see them like really or like if I visualise an apple I will see a bright red apple or like the star I, I see the star like that in my head so I find that really interesting I'd be interested to know what you see on that chart so I googled the different types of synesthesia and some really fascinated me so for example apart from mine right graphene colour we've got chromesthesia so people see colours when they hear certain sounds so if they hear a car honk they might see a certain colour in their head relating to what they just heard and that's often like as well if people hear music they'll see colours in their head there's lexical gustatory synesthesia when they hear certain words they might taste taste something odour colour synesthesia so people who can associate smells with visual experiences this could be the one that I have when I see pictures of people and I smell smells I don't know there's mirror touch this one as well spatial sequence synesthesia so some people see numerical sequences in a particular space so it's like a circle in your head. There's also number form synesthesia where instead of seeing numbers in a physical plane they see like a mental map of numbers that they can navigate. Auditory tactile synesthesia so if someone hears a certain sound like a whistle they might feel like a pain in their hands. And then there's also kinesthetic synesthesia which I think is one of the more rarer forms. That is more connected to more complex things like mathematical equations or letter sequences. So it says here a person describes seeing interactions between physical shapes causing sensations in their feet when solving a maths problem. That's very specific. <laughs> also fun fact approximately 3-5% of the population may have some form of synesthesia. There's a type of synesthesia that blew my mind and it's ordinal lingual synesthesia I think it is. This is a form of synesthesia where ordered sequences such as numbers, days, months and letters are associated with personalities or genders and I definitely feel like my numbers have genders. <laughs> Let me explain. So for example, I love the number six. Like I really love the number six. Six is a very hot number and I sound mad right? I don't care. Six is a hot number. In my head six represents a really hot guy but I'm not physically seeing a hot guy it's more like a feeling. I know 666 six, six. people are gonna make fun of the fact that I sound like I'm saying sex but I'm not I'm saying sex right so sure know that it's the number of the devil but in my head I just see really attractive triplets. <laughs> Although here's a fun fact right when I was watching Skins on Netflix it's on Netflix I was getting really strong six the number six vibes from Sid in Skins like he just felt like a six and I couldn't put my finger on it shush and then I saw a photo of him now and he's looking quite good so I googled his birthday I googled the actor's birthday because I just knew that he was a six and his birthday is the 6th of May I knew it I don't know how but I knew it other number personalities right two in my head is like a little boy like a toddler like a green little boy I don't know two is chaotic but also obedient six is just really cool seven and eleven are sensible numbers Three is a comfortable, relatable number. Four is mumsy. Five is dad-like. I can't explain it, but that's just what it is in my head. One that a lot of you might relate to is misophonia. Misophonia, misophonia, I don't know. Some websites said that it was a form of synesthesia. Some just said it was related, so I don't know. But I know a few people that I think have this. But it's where anger or disgust is felt when hearing certain sounds. So like when someone's chewing, and you physically cannot stand it, it fills you with anger and disgust and you have to leave the room because it's so unbearable, that would potentially be misophonia. Misophonia. I don't know. Misosu. For me, right, when I hear kissy noises, like you know how that noise that people make to dogs or animals when they try and get the animal to come towards them and they sort of like purse their lips and suck in with their lips and make that squeaky noise, that gives me full-on shivers all over my body and I have to put my hands over my ears like I cannot stand it it makes me sick it makes my eyes water and I just can't deal with it that and also when people scrape their shoes along the ground outside it makes me it makes me feel horrible Um, also nails down paper like even the thought is making me like freak out but when that happens I have to scratch my clothes because it, in my head it counteracts what I'm hearing it makes no sense but I, I'm like this whenever I hear noises the people must think I'm mad so I feel like misophonia is more than a dislike of a sound it's like a 
you can't bear that sound you have to leave and it invokes aggressive or really negative emotions inside you. I asked for questions over on Instagram about this. Ali said what are the pros and cons? To be honest there's no cons and pros would really just be that it's a bit different in it and it could potentially help me remember words. I think it does help me remember words and certain things and I think I do have a more vivid imagination and vivid thoughts so that's a pro sometimes. Sometimes it's not because I just feel like I'm overly stimulated by things all the time. Would it affect a relationship or friendship if they had an ugly coloured name? <laughs> Someone could be called Poop and it would have no... Although Poop's not a bad colour in my head. The word Poop has a bad colour. Poop, well... The answer is no. Because I don't really consciously think of it that, that much at all. Are there names that you don't like because of their colours? Um, again, the names I dislike are more because of the sound or if they are the name of a person that I might not get on with. That has more of an effect on what names I like than the colours of them. So to be honest I don't think it would put me off a name if the colours weren't right in my head because it doesn't bother me. Is it ever distracting or overwhelming? No, it's not overwhelming because I don't think about it. I'm so used to it that it's not even a thing. Is it always that you see sounds or just certain sounds and sometimes um, I don't see sounds? How do I explain this? If someone were to say the word dog I would p picture a dog. I wouldn't picture the word dog but if we were specifically talking about the word dog or if I was thinking of how to spell something then I would picture the word in my head so I'd have to be discussing the word to picture the word in my head but if someone was talking about house I wouldn't picture the word house I don't think I would just picture a house, you know. I'm not consciously thinking, oh this word has colours because I'm so used to it. If a black letter is on a back, black background, do you still see it? Yeah, because it's funny, I'm, I don't know how, but yeah, I'm seeing a black letter each of the black background, but I'm still seeing the letter, strange. Do you dislike a name if you think the colours of the letters don't go well together? I don't really dislike names because of colours, but there are definitely names that are less attractive in my head, like ones with H's and I'm sorry if you have an H name. Or like, I'm trying to think of an example of like, ones with lots of Y's, G's, H's aren't the most attractive in my head. Unless they're paired with letters that do match them. Does this happen when reading? That's a good question. Um, it doesn't happen really when reading because when I'm reading I'm picturing the story in my head. I'm picturing what's happening in the story. So I'm not thinking of the words. Really I'm thinking of what's happening, if that makes sense. Do colours for a word carry on to another word with the same meaning? So for example car versus automobile? No, it depends on the, completely on the letters. The meaning of the word has nothing to do with it. Car would be green and red mainly, but automobile is mainly red because it starts with A and it has like an M. It helps, you know, it helps to actually read the, read the words so I can picture it better in my head. But no, they're different colours. How would you feel about learning to sharpen your skills if it meant you could eventually be an empath? That's interesting. I don't know if it's related to empathy. I know like maybe mirror touch synesthesia, so the, the woman that could feel other people's pain, that I think is more empathetic. But if I could sharpen my skills, then yeah, hell yeah. Related to that, I've always felt like I've been more oversensitive to things or easily overwhelmed by things than the average person so I don't know if it's related like I constantly have so many thoughts in my head and I'm picturing so many things at once all the time and it's like like I wouldn't mind a wee spot of aphantasia or whatever it was called just as a little like break <laughs> I'd love to know what it's like to not have all these thoughts currently like going through my head constantly can you develop synesthesia from a head trauma I think you can yeah I think people can get it from certain like brain related things like um, strokes or uh, head injuries and stuff like that but mine didn't develop from that if that's what you were asking. If you have any other questions about it at all or if you want me to do another video about it maybe I could do like something to do with what colour certain people's names are like celebrities and stuff I don't know let me know if that's something you would be interested in. Leave your name in the comments and I'll tell you what colour you are and any other questions about it. Anything that I've missed out, let me know. The brain is fascinating. I love stuff to do with the brain. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the notification bell if you want notified of when I upload. I put more of the Omigo footage in a private video for patrons. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can join my Patreon page if you want. There's just some extra new characters in that one that you haven't seen in the main one. Yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.